All right, so let's start in the beginning. Um, our tour itself started uh, in Kasane, and uh, it's my normal Serengeti route that I did through Lusaka. So nothing special to um, to talk about in that area. But then I turned off my main route and I went into Tanganyika. After we traveled for probably about what was four or five days, uh, it was time for a bit of a rest and we found a very nice spot on the lake shore and uh, we spent uh, two nights there to to take a bit of a break and to just really enjoy the uh, the scenes around Tanganyika so this is obviously where everything starts the ferry at Kazankula packed in like sardines uh, it's something that uh, you would have experienced if you've traveled through there you can see in the background the bridge is uh, being built quite quickly and very soon these ferries will not be running anymore so once we arrived at Tanganyika uh, it was time for a little bit of a chill a little bit of a relax and um, Tanganyika is the setting is a, is very nice it's very different from Malawi uh, if you've ever been to Malawi Malawi is a lot more developed would be the right word um, a lot of people next to the lake right on the shore um, in Malawi on the lake road itself there's lots of people Tanganyika is a very dense forest as you go down into Tanganyika and then it opens up into these little spots that you can uh, that you can visit so we found a lovely lodge uh, excellently run and uh, a bit of time to do maybe a little bit of R&R uh, &R, uh, take some pictures nice sunset we had so the cameras were all ready and of course if you have water there must be a boat and if there's a boat there must be a sunset cruise so the guys decided that was it sunset cruise for the afternoon and uh, off they went for a for a sunset cruise together with this they did a bit of snorkeling uh, you can also do scuba diving at uh, at Tanganyika um, they are will probably have it set up in in a few months or a, a year or so um, but snorkeling also great uh, quite a few fish species in uh, Lake Tanganyika the sunset that afternoon splendid uh, on the opposite shore you can see the DRC and the DRC probably about 40 kilometers from there um, in the foreground you can see the table that was set for us for the dinner for that evening excellent three course meal uh, really worth it felt like kings sitting on the lake shore the wind calmed down and it was absolutely tranquil for that afternoon so once we relaxed a little bit and rested our our bodies we set off into rwanda now for this rwanda trip i really wanted just to focus on the genocide museum and experience Rwanda driving through it very mountainous terrain go very slow you can't go fast at all um, in the 2019 trip I'm going to spend two three days extra and do some of the tree, uh, tree canopy tours that you can do in the southwest of Rwanda uh, they also have some monkey tours that you can see different monkeys that they have in the area so um, 2019 I am going to visit a little bit more of Rwanda but I will definitely do the Genocide Museum again the Genocide Museum is one of those places that uh, that just stops you in your tracks it uh, brings you back to, to who you are as a person um, who we are as a species and what we are capable of uh, so what happened it was between the Hutus and the Tutsis and it happened in 1994 where a group of people decided that another group of people um, was not uh, worthy of life and they basically just tried to wipe them off the face of the earth it was in April of 1994 it happened over a period of a hundred days and there was roughly a million people that was slaughtered uh, over those hundred days there's little genocide museums all over the country uh, there's mass graves pretty much everywhere and um, here at the central museum or the central memorial in Kigali um, there's a, a large number of the one million people that is buried over here so uh, it's a it's a difficult one to do um, I've done slave markets and very emotional tours before 
this is one of them, but it is really worth doing. Uh, it, it's one of those that will go into your archives as people are capable of really bad stuff. And um, the reason the Rwandese people built this is not just as a historical monument, but it is also as a, as a warning sign for future gen generations. So they warn about the signs of what happened. How did it start? Um, how did they get to where they were? And, um, and that's one of their self-proclaimed messages is to warn people that this doesn't ever happen again. It's, it's not just a, well, it's history, we'll remember it and carry on with life. Um, if you go in there, they give you the signs of what started the whole thing and how easy it is to get into a place like that. Um, so yeah, this is just a few pictures of, of the um, genocide memorial in Kigali. A lot of symbolism, uh, rose gardens, um, the tree of remembrance, uh, that uh, the tree, the, the forest of remembrance that is in, in the memorial itself. Uh, this, the slabs of the covering of the mass graves, uh, many of the people that they still dig up today um, are brought here and buried in the memorial um, grounds itself. Uh, the wall, as I say, is continuously still being updated with new names of people that, that are buried there. It happened in April and this flame basically runs or burns every April for 100 days to uh, commemorate the, um, the genocide. Uh, very tropical, lovely gardens, really pretty. Um, this is a, one of the open graves where they are still burying people. Uh, it's not open for visitors, but they, as I said, they are still burying people there as they go through. The symbolism, this is a, one of the um, exhibitions where it shows basically a, a water feature, round circle, typically the houses of the traditional Rwandese people and surrounded by bananas and, and tropical fruit and plants. Um, very much the, what they know. This is how they've lived forever before the genocide came. And as I say, in, in the museum itself, uh, a lot of references to other genocides that have happened. Um, and also looking at the, um, the signs of the Rwandese one, just to tell people that this is a bad idea. Uh, what was so bad about it was it, it happened over a hundred days. It was so quick that the rest of the world just didn't realize what was happening in Rwanda until a million people have died. Um, by that time, the rebels and the people that were fighting against it internally um, basically brought it to halt. It wasn't the rest of the world that, that dived in and stopped it. Uh, the rest of the world was just too slow. It happened internally and it was stopped internally. Um, by the rebels that um, that basically just started fighting against it. But in 100 days, a million people, uh, it happens very quickly. So it's worth visiting. Uh, if you ever get there, uh, go through to the memorial. Um, do the visit. It's a tough one, but it's worth the uh, $20 or whatever you pay um, to go in there and, and visit it. It will definitely be on the agenda for 2019. It is a must do. If you don't want to do it and you're on the trip, sure, you can just skip it. Uh, there's a nice restaurant. You can have some coffees and cakes. Um, so you can sit there outside and, and you don't have to do it. But uh, it is highly recommended. It's, um, it's one of those things that we have to remind ourselves of what we are capable of doing uh, when we do it. So that was Rwanda. Uh, next up, we'll move on to the gorillas.